What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Red 89 here bringing you another video. And for today's video, we're gonna take a retrospective look at one of my favorite films of all time. And in fact, this is my favorite animation film of all time. And that's gonna be Ghost in the Shell from 1995. Today we're gonna talk about this release, the special features that are on here, but also, like I said, go into a little bit of retrospective talking about my feelings on the film, kind of when I discovered this film and how monumental and important it is to my cinema, like me as a fan of cinema, how it guided me into what I liked and more and finding other animes and sci-fi, all that kind of stuff, pretty much was born from this film. So let's get into this video, make sure you stay tuned. And this is gonna be spoilers, so if you haven't seen this film, you need to go run out and watch it. It's streaming in all kinds of places for free. You can check this film out, I'm not even joking you. There's like four or five streaming services that have this film. So there's no reason you cannot not watch it right now. And then come back so we can talk about it. Let's do this. Roll it. So yes, Ghost in the Shell from 1995. This is a freaking amazing anime film. For me, this was the monumental anime that first got me into loving just anime in general. When I discovered this film, and I believe it was at the video store that was kind of close to my house, it was called Hollywood Video. And I went there and I was just renting one weekend, you know what I mean? Trying to find out what we were gonna watch that weekend, you know, me and my mom and stuff. And I had to have been like probably 10. I was probably like nine or 10 when I saw this. And like, you know, it wasn't this cover, but it's just, oh man, it was one of those films that just grabbed you, you know what I mean? And I was like, it's so interesting looking. And I don't even think I read the synopsis and then I went home and popped this baby in and watched it. And man, it's such a spectacle being the fact that it's just one of the most beautiful looking animes. And it's an anime that asks very important questions and has strong themes at the center of it. But besides that, it's a good film. So I didn't mean that's what's great about it is there's a lot of movies that would try to answer questions like this film about what is the meaning of life? What does it mean to have a soul and artificial intelligence and the difference between humans and artificial intelligence? Asking those kind of questions and being that strong of a sci-fi type movie and it not be good, you know, hard to understand or people don't like it, but this is a fantastic film. Mainly centering around Section 9, which is kind of like a futuristic police force. Think like Law & Order SVU, but in the future. It's a crazy good team that has a lot of cool components to it. And like I said, there's Section 9 and they do really cool investigations and they go into stories and stuff and very much cop drama type stuff. In this film, they're trying to track down a hacker who's called the Puppet Master. And what the Puppet Master does is he's actually able to hack into people and use them. You know what I mean? So in the world where artificial intelligence and humans, the line is kind of blurred. It, we come to a point where it's like, oh man, humans can actually be hacked because we have mechanical, you know, and cybernetic parts inside of us and we're all hooked into the system. So it really asks a lot of strong questions and stuff like that. And I love the voice cast in here. It's fabulous. The writing, the design of this film is great. And coupled with that, the music by, I believe it's Kenji Kawa. I'm sorry if I butchered that, but the music, oh my God, it's so good. It's like kind of very slow, melodic, you know, kind of chanting type music, but it has a cyberpunk kind of techno-y feel to it, but it has a very old school feel to it. And that's what makes this film and the music in it so timeless. Another fabulous thing about this film is like I said, even being at a young age when I discovered it, it it asks some really strong questions. And it's the way the film looks too. It has this kind of cyberpunk, kind of, you know, neo-noir type look to it. And that assists in, you know, making the world feel so three-dimensional, making it feel lived in. And that's what I love about this film is when I watch it, I feel like I'm watching real people. Like this, that's what I mean. This is the first anime film that I watched and I was like, wow, storytelling transcends. Like it sounds so stupid, but like at that young of age, like that's when I realized after watching this movie, that it's like stories transcend just live action or books, you know what I mean? Like animation is great. And there's a lot of good anime films out there that are so much better than some of the live action stuff that we digest. 
Yes, they tried to make a live action of this with Scarlett Johansson, which is, it's not an awful movie, but they did change a lot of things that didn't necessarily make it a better film. It's a decent movie, a live action adaptation, but to, to come close to this, you're not going to come close to this. This film is like a once in a lifetime type movie. Like, you know what I mean? And for me, this is a clear 10 out of 10. This is in my top 50 greatest films of all time. And this is one of those movies when often when people ask me a question, what's a perfect movie that you can think of in your mind? What's a perfect film? This is one of those films that I often mention or I think of when people ask me that question. And let's talk about this release being it's the 4K has a Blu-ray and digital code. And man, what's amazing about this film is that the 4K, like it really does assist in the, the gorgeous imagery in this film looks so good. And typically when you come to anime films, let me get that glare right. Typically anime films have upwards of about 2000 cuts in the movie. And this film only has around 600 cuts. So there's the way that Mamoru Oshii, who's the director of this film, the way he kind of orchestrated this film and they built this movie is that it's to look at. It's very beautiful. A lot of the shots you just linger on for a long time, like a live action movie where you're just watching somebody kind of ride like a little like kind of canoe boat through the streets, looking at New Japan and stuff like that. And it's it's gorgeous. Like I said, all the shots in here, the paintings, it's like the artistry, the the amount of time it took to build just the background. You can see the amount of hours that went into this movie. And that's why I love this anime movie and why it stands the test of time and why it's like 27 years later and we're still, you know, something like that. And we're still talking about this movie, you know what I mean? And like, it's so influential like the Wachowskis, James Cameron, Quentin Tarantino. There are so many directors out there that love this movie and have spoken about this movie, like for real. This is such a good film, and this has some really good special features on it too. We have new audio commentaries in here. We have accessing Section 9, 25 years into the future, which is a good documentary about how this film kind of changed the landscape of animation and how it became a global success. This was kind of the first anime film that was really a global success around the world. Everybody gravitated towards this film. It's also got landscapes and dreamscapes, the art and architecture of Ghost in the Shell, which is fabulous. That goes into the details of how they built the city, where they got the inspirations for the designs and the artwork and stuff like that. Then we have the making of Ghost in the Shell, which is only on the Blu-ray disc. That, that special feature is only on the Blu-ray disc, and so is the original trailers for the film are also on the Blu-ray disc. So yes, this is a fabulous transfer. So happy to add this to my collection. Like I said, you can tell by my glowing recommendation and like why I love this film. It's just, it's a perfect film. It really is so good that I can't just describe it enough. There's, it's an hour and 22 minutes of just pure, pure beauty. And like, you know what I mean? And I love that. And this is one of those films that I think of, you don't necessarily watch this film. You kind of watch it to study it because that's how good it is. You like, every time I watch this film, I feel like I learned something new about it and the characters, you know, the designs, the, the questions that this film asks. Like I said, we're asking questions that scientists and movie guys, moviegoers and writers were like, kind of just coming into the world in 95, like all these questions were really getting brought up about where is technology going to take us in the future? What is artificial intelligence going to look like? And you can really tell when you watch films like The Matrix or you watch like Inception or a lot of films like that, or even like I said, Quentin Tarantino's films like Kill Bill. When you watch those films, you can see how this film really did reach a lot of people and it inspired so many people. And I can't, like I said, I'm glowing. My face is just, I'm smiling endlessly because this movie is fabulous. And I highly recommend checking this film out. We didn't get too deep into spoilers, you know what I mean? Kind of just talked about the plot a little bit. And Kusanagi, Major Kusanagi is probably one of my favorite favorite female characters leads in any movie ever. She's right up there with Ellen Ripley and like Sarah Connor in terms of a very strong female protagonist that is smart, but also has some flaws and is asking important questions, like I said, in this movie that are things that we should be talking about. And I think when I watch films like this, 
and like Blade Runner, these Ghost in the Shell and Blade Runner are those films where I'm like, oh, I can see the future really looking like that. Like, you know, 50 years from now, I can see our world kind of looking like that. And we were already kind of going in that direction. A lot of the stuff that was science fiction back in the day in 95 in this film is now fact. It's science fact now. So it's kind of wild how this film, like I said, what has happened and how long just in that 25, you know, 28 year gap, like how long this film has like stood the test of time and how much it actually was true about what it was saying and what was going to be the future. So I love this movie and thanks for sticking around with me all for this chat as we discuss the 4K Ultra HD release and the movie and all the beautiful stuff that goes along with this film. So like I said, thanks for sticking around with me all. But I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section. Have you seen this movie? What do you think of this anime and how close is it to your top 10? Or if you haven't, I would love to hear from all of you too. Because like I said, this is a glowing recommendation. You really need to go check this film out because this is one of those movies that you can tell like when you watch it, it's like, you know, like Akira, well, like it's certain films that just heavy metal, like there's certain anime films that just, they stand the test of time because of the mark they made. You know what I mean? They just made a mark. And this is one of those films that even 30 years from now, 10 years from now, all that kind of stuff, we're still going to be talking about this one. Ninja Scroll is another good one too, if you haven't seen that one. So yes, these are just my thoughts and my opinions on this film. Like you can tell, I'm very high on this movie, but don't forget to like and subscribe and if, especially if you're new to the channel so you get more videos like this i'm also going to be popping out a ranking video soon i think i'm going to be doing my top 10 worst and best movies of the year there's still a lot of films that i haven't seen from this year i'm still trying to catch up on some films that came out this year but i'll try to nail down my list of my 10 worst and 10 best from this year and then pop those out before the end of the year it's wild. It's already getting to that New Year's time, and it's kind of the busy time for me, too, because my son's birthday is coming up. So, I'll, like I said, try to get those videos out, but make sure you guys are like, subscribe to the channel so you can check those out and you click that notification bell. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.